Hey guys, this is a video for series AC circuits. I just want to bring to your attention that I posted um, a rule sheet for you guys under um, this particular module section. So be, be aware of this rule sheet and use it when you're answering the questions for your module test because it'll help you to remember the rules that you can apply to various questions, okay? So I wanna go over a few examples of different types of loads. So um, just a note, um, in this particular module, being the first of our RLC set, all of the loads contained within the circuit will be of the same kind. And if it's referencing inductive loads and capacitive loads, they will always be pure, meaning they do not contain variables of resistance in them, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, so I have an example here on the board. I have three resistors, three in-phase loads uh, connected in series with each other. I know they're in series because they are tip to tail. So the load side of this resistor is connected to the line side of this resistor and on and on demonstrating a series circuit. So I'm asked to find the overall supply voltage here and I'm given these variables. So resistor one is 30 ohms, resistor two is 31 resistor three is 39, and I'm given the volt drop across the third resistor. So I need to find out what my applied voltage is here. So um, I have the ability to find out current by using the information that's given to me in the third resistor, okay? So we do apply Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law for a series circuit in terms of um, the sum of the volt drops will equal the volt rise, which I will apply to finding the uh, supply voltage. Also being that current is constant, so being that I have the volt drop and the resistance of the third resistor, I'm able to find the current and whatever the current is in the third resistor will be consistent throughout being that it's a series circuit. Okay, so I want to find IR3. Okay, so the formula for current, if you're not sure, you can use your little triangle, E, I, R, cover the R, I is E over R, so V, R, 3 divided by R, 3, okay? The volt drop is 49.2 volts, divide that by 39 ohms, and that gives me current of, One point two six amps. Okay, so if that's the current through the third resistor, that will be consistent throughout the circuit because this is a series circuit. So I total equals one point two six amps. So I want to find out what my voltage is across the entire circuit. So I'm going to find the volt drops of this one and this one, and then I'm going to add them all together using Kirchhoff's law. I could also get my resistance total and times that by current as well. So I'm going to do both methods for you. Okay, so I want to find out VR1. So that's going to be IR1 times R1. Okay, so current is constant, 1.26 amps, times the resistance is 30 ohms, and that's going to give me a volt drop of... 37.8 volts, okay, so that'll be across here, and then VR2 will be IR2, I'll make sure my camera's not slipping, times R2, again current is constant, series circuit, times the resistance of the second resistor, 31 ohms, Equal so 1.26 times 31 gives me 39.06 volts. Okay, so in a series resistive circuit, Kirchhoff's voltage law is true. The sum of the volt drops will equal the volt rise. E total equals VR1 plus VR2 plus VR3. So I have 37. 0.8 volts across the second resistor. I have 39.06 volts 
plus 49.2 volts, which was given, plus 49.2, 37.8 equals 126.06 volts. So that is my E total. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Again, it's about working smarter, not harder. I could also have gotten resistance total and used my current. So, right, um, E total equals I total times R total. That would have worked as well. 1.26. Um, first, I have to get my resistance total. Do I have room here? Yes. R total, resistances are additive in a series circuit, R1 plus R2 plus R3, um, 30 ohms plus 31 ohms plus 39 ohms gives me a resistance total of 100 ohms, right? So I could go 1.26 amps times 100 ohms and that gives me 126 volts applied, okay? So that's my first example. So series circuit, current is constant, resistances are additive, and Kirchhoff's voltage law applies. The sum of the volt drops will equal your supply voltage, okay? So next I wanna do a, uh, an inductive circuit. pure inductors rated at 0.14 henrys. Okay, so I have three inductors. They're pure, so they have no value or variance of resistance in them. Okay, so L1 equals 0.14 henrys. L2 equals 0.22 henrys. Uh, L3 equals 0.34 henrys 120 volts 60 hertz is the frequency and then they're giving they want me to find the volt drop across the 14 so I'm looking for VL1 so I'm looking for this volt drop okay so I'm going to use my sheet here and look up inductors in series. Again, they need to be purely inductive, which all of our examples are. It tells me that my inductance or my inductance value are additive straight across, as well as my inductive reactances are additive straight across. Okay, so um, directly proportional. So I'm gonna go. Um, I need to find the volt drop across this specific inductor. To do so, I need to find the current that's flowing through the circuit. So I'm going to take all of my inductors, add them together, and apply the inductive reactance formula, and then we'll look at it in an alternative way that we could have solved it as well, okay? So L total, inductance total equals L1 plus L2 plus L3. L1 is 0.14 Henry's plus 0.22 Henry's plus 0.34 Henry's. Okay, that gives me an L total of 0 0.14 plus 0.22 plus 0.34, 0 0.7. Okay, so uh, the variable of it, impedance is the uh, opposition to current flow, so the, the inductance has to be converted into inductive reactance in order for us to find the value of current. XL equals 2 pi FL, 2 times pi are constant, frequency is listed as 60 hertz, times my L total, 0.7 Henry's. That will give me my XL total for the circuit. 2 times pi times 60 times 0.7. Turn on your calculator. Sorry. 
that gives me an XL total of 263.894 ohms, okay? Now I have my XL total. I can find the current because they gave me the applied voltage. So in a purely inductive circuit, XL total equals impedance, right? I total equals E total over Z. Because it's purely inductive, Z equals XLT. So 120 volts, divide that by 263.894 ohms is... 0.455. Okay, so it's a series circuit, so that will be consistent with the current throughout. I total equals 0.455 amps. So I want to figure out the volt drop across the first inductor. I have the current flow that's flowing through it. Now I need to figure out what the XL is for that specific um, inductor. Okay, so we have to go find our XL1. Okay, XL1 equals 2 pi FL. 2 times pi times 60 hertz times 0.14 henrys. And that gives me 0.4 52.78 ohms. 52.78 ohms. Okay, so now I have the inductive reactants, I have the current, so I can find the volt drop across that specific inductor. Okay, so VXL1 equals IXL1 times XL1. Current is 0.455 amps times 52.78 ohms and that will give me a volt drop of 0.455 times 52.78 24 volts so VXL1 equals 24 volts. So it's important to recognize that um, we need to find the inductive reactants. If we're given the variable of Henry's, that's really not very useful until it's converted into inductive reactants. So I could have done this differently. I could have gotten the individual inductive reactances and added them together to get this, right? And then once I got the current, I would just apply it exactly the same way. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. So let's just kind of recap. So when you have inductors in series, your inductances are additive. If they were inductive reactances, they would also be additive. Current is constant and consistent throughout. And Kirchhoff's voltage law is applicable when you have a like variable. So when you have an inductive circuit, the sum of the volt drops will equal the volt rise as well, okay? So now I want to do an example of capacitors. Okay, so in series, so far, everything that we've done has been additive proportionally, right? So resistors are additive, uh, inductors are additive, inductive reactances are additive. Capacitors, however, are added inversely. And I want you to have a look at three capacitors drawn in series, okay? Um, so here's my supply. Okay, three capacitors drawn in series. Basically, when you put capacitors in series, um, it's almost like you're stretching the plates apart. And we've talked about how um, the distance between the plates can affect the amount of capacitance in a circuit. I'm just gonna revisit that formula. So capacitance equals area of the plates times 
uh, dielectric constant divided by the distance of the plate. So when we connect them in the series, it's the same as taking, uh, increasing the distance between the plates. So if I increase the amount of, um, if I increase the distance between the plates, I'm decreasing the amount of capacitance. And in terms of capacitive reactants, the XC formula is inverse, 2 pi FC. So if I'm decreasing my capacitance, I'm increasing my capacitive reactance. And in terms of current, if my capacitive reactance goes up, my current is going to go down. So these are the formulas I want you to use when you're trying to picture what's happening in our circuit. Okay, so that's why we would take our capacitors um, in series and we would add the capacitance inversely. Okay, so C total equals one all over and on and on and on for as many capacitors as you add. So let's have a look at a circuit now. All right, so I have, ooh, this one's, this one's kind of tricky. <laughs> of course it is, all right. I'm gonna do an easy one for capacitors and then I'm gonna do a tougher one for capacitors, okay? Because capacitors are a little tricky being that it's inversely added. Okay, so just look at it. I'm gonna do two different ones. All right, so my first capacitor, my C, is 12 microfarads, C1. C2 is 20 microfarads, C3 is 30 microfarads, okay? Uh, what is, I'm looking for my C total. So I'm looking for capacitance total, all right? So it's, it can be written this way. Or it can be written this way. Same thing. It means the same thing. This way is probably easier if you're expected to work backwards, personally. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one for this one. 1 all over 12 plus 1 all over 20 plus 1 all over 30. Okay, so if we're adding our capacitors inversely, it would make sense to say that my capacitance total will be smaller than my smallest branch. Smallest or smaller, smallest load. So 12 microfarads is the smaller capacitor. My C total will be smaller than that. Okay, so let's add that together. So 12 plus 20 plus 30. I'm going to want to inverse that. Gives me a C total of 6 microfarads. Okay, so now I want to look at that. Um, in a little more difficult, okay? So that's how you would get your capacitance total. Okay, so this one, they are saying I have 20, 29 microfarads. I have 33 microfarads. I have third one unknown. And then they give me the volt drop across the 29 as 22.2 volts. And what am I looking for? I'm looking for the C of the third one. So this is a, a doozy is what I would like to call this one. So let's just kind of recap. We have three alike variables. So that means that my C, and it's connected in series. So that means my current will be constant, that um, my capacitors are added inversely, 
and that the sum of the volt drops will equal the volt rise or the supply because um, Kirchhoff's voltage law is true. So I have a volt drop across this capacitor of 22.2 volts and I have the capacitance rating. So you gotta work with what you got here. So I'm able to find the current through the circuit with this first capacitor. So the first thing I need to do is get the capacitive reactance of my capacitor because capacitance doesn't do anything. Uh, the variable of impedance is the variable that's opposing current flow. So that's what we need to work with here. So XC1 equals one all over two. I don't want to confuse anyone with that. XC equals one all over two pi F C. Did they give me frequency? They did. And they told me it's 120 volts, 60 hertz. Because if they didn't give me that information, there's not much I can do with this one either. So um, it's going to be 1 all over 2 times pi times 60 hertz times 29 microfarads, 10 to the negative 6, because we're dealing with the variable or the unit of measure of micro, okay? So 2 times pi times 60 times 29 exponent negative 6 equals, and I'm going to inverse that, gives me a capacitive reactance of 91.47 ohms, okay? Hopefully that's right. <laughs> um, XC equals 91.47 ohms. Okay, so now I can figure out the current that's flowing through that first capacitor because I equals E over Z. We're dealing with pure capacitors, so Z can be replaced with XC. Okay, so my I want to find the um, I total, so I'm going to take the volt drop that's given across that first capacitor, uh, VXC1, so that's going to be 22.2 volts. I'm going to divide that by the 91.47 um, ohms, and that's going to give me the current. 22.2, divide that by 91.47, gives me a current of... 0.243 amps. So if I have that much current flowing for the through the first capacitor, that will be the current that's flowing throughout. Current only has one path. Okay. Um, so I want to figure out what the capacitance of this guy is. I have the current that's flowing through it, but I don't have anything else really. Um, I could find my capacitance total or my XC total um, because I do have my supply voltage and my current now. So that's one path I could take. XC total equals E total over I total. That could be useful. 120 volts divided by 0.243 amps. And that would give me my, my XC total, 120 divided by 0.243 gives me an XC total of 493.83 ohms. Hopefully I have enough room. I hate this board. There's like no room. Okay, I can erase this. We know the current. Okay. So I know the XC of this variable. I can find the XC of that one. I have my XC total, so let's keep going with that. I wanna figure out what my XC2 is gonna be. Okay, I'm just gonna give myself some room here. XC2 equals one all over two times pi times 60 hertz times 33 microfarads, so 10 to the negative 6. What does that give me for my XC across this guy? 2 times pi times 60 times 33 exponent negative 6 
I'm going to inverse that. That gives me 80 point three eight ohms of capacitive reactants. So what do we know about capacitive reactants? I don't know. Well, let's check our little cheat sheet here, our little rule sheet. It says our capacitive reactances are equal or um, added straight across. And I think that's more uh, easier to work with than adding backwards inversely, but I will do that for you guys as well. Um, so right now I have XC1, I have XC2, and I have my XC total. So if I'm able to add my um, capacitive reactances straight up, I should be able to add these two together, subtract from this one, and that will give me my XC3, all right? So it says XC total equals XC1 plus XC2 plus XC3, right? So I have this 493.83 ohms equals XC1 was 91.47 ohms plus XC2, which is 80.38. And of course I've run out of room. Oh, I missed the classroom plus XC3, okay? So we're going to take the, add these two together and then, so 80.38 plus 91.47 equals 171.85. So now I'm gonna move that over here, 493.83 subtract 171.85 equals XC3. So like I said, don't be afraid to use that cheat sheet when you're getting comfortable with how to add in uh, these particular circuits. So 493.83 subtract 171.85 equals 321.98 ohms. Oh my, 27 minutes long. Equals 321.98 ohms. Okay. So I'm still looking for C3 here. I have XC now, I'm looking for C3. Well, there's so many ways you could do this. You get the bolt drop there. have the current. All right, let's do it. I'm looking for C. So um, XC equals one all over two times pi times frequency times capacitance. So I want to get capacitance by itself. Okay, so I'm going to cross multiply. XC um, everything here is multiplied. Oh, no, first I gotta bring it all up. So two times pi times frequency, and I'm leaving C equals one all over C. Okay, um, I wanna get C on its own. So um, I, I brought C up, I wanna get XC on its own, or C on its own, so I'll leave that. And then this is all multiply, so I have to divide. What I do on one side, then I have to do on the other. Okay, 
Okay, so what have I got here from this mess? C equals one all over XC times two times pi times frequency. Okay, so I'm looking for C. So C equals one all over XC um, was 321.98 ohms. This is probably not the way I should have did it. Two times pi times 60 hertz. Okay, so I'm gonna punch that into my calculator here. That is my C. Pretty simple, huh?